I remember the shooting began on Nicholson Lane. A lawn maintenance worker was mysteriously shot and killed. An all points bulletin went out for a plain white paneled van that, report, that reportedly left the scene of the crime. In the resulting weeks ahead, nine more people were killed, three others were injured, not just here in Maryland, but in DC and Virginia as well. Before the perpetrators, Lloyd Boyd Malvo and John Allen Muhammad were ultimately arrested at, at a Maryland rest stop. You know, Mark, you know, I think the human, human nature is to try to forget terrible things and trauma. But, you know, this area was truly traumatized by these killings. What are your first recollections? Well, I, I remember is, is going back to looking for a uh, white box van, which was the sort of what the news and the expectation was. It turned out not to be what, they, what the two uh, perpetrators were using. I think it was a blue Chevy, but uh, it really was a period when where people felt scared and, and concerned and, and worried about being in a bus stop or being out at it, it's just regular retail places. Well, I mean, to your point, when the shootings occurred in Virginia, one at a Home Depot and one at a gas station, I think everyone in the area, at least uh, this is how I felt, was, you know, you're, you could not go anywhere for your daily life and not feel that you were vulnerable. It was, you know, the, the scariest moment that I think we've, we've had to endure. Uh, Mara, say you have the benefit of youth. And also you were, I believe you mentioned that you were living in Peru at the time, but you know, have you been impacted at all by people talking about the sniper shootings and how it impacted their lives? Absolutely. You know, I had grown up in Arlington, Virginia, and my, my parents had decided that we were going to go to Peru for high school. And so, you know, my cousins, my friends, my friends from elementary and middle school, just hearing that, you know, that they, that there had been a shooting at a Home Depot. I mean, it was, it was traumatizing, you know, folks would really think twice before going into any kind of public spaces, parks or, or, you know, malls, et cetera. Um, definitely, you know, I definitely felt that, that, that anxiety from, from my friends and family when we would call to check in. But, you know, what's even more kind of astonishing is that, uh, the wife of um, John Allen Muhammad had actually uh, told authorities about his 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 issues. I mean, she had been a victim of domestic violence, uh, you know, death threats, etc. Nobody listened to to Mildred Muhammad, um, you know. And it's 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 listen. If you're if if you know if if we're not listening to our you know you know to a perpetrator's family members, I mean, uh, you know, I don't really know what else we could have done. But it's it's that, really that is a tale that is often too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, too often told after the tragedy has occurred. Yeah. You know, Mark, County Executive Doug Duncan and Police Chief Charles Moose won national praise for the way they professionally handled the investigation. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think they both really stood out. And it was it was Montgomery County leadership at the best uh, when that take place. And um, I think it's really unfortunate that to what we, we lost Charles Moose. He's has it's, died relatively recently, but we lost him because when he wrote a book, there was an ethics charge against his, quote, profiting for when really he was just sharing his experience with, and, and leadership. And, and it strikes me as that uh, we really kind of had a fork in the road. It would have been much better for us to be able to keep Moose as a police chief for a longer time than rather having, instead of having this kind of literal reading of the ethics rule that somehow interpreted writing a book about his experiences as somehow uh, uh, violating our, our internal policies. And as again, as I think Doug Duncan, who's still so, still around, um, he also did a great job as his county executive in, in standing yeah. there. Really I, 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 I knew Charles Moose a little bit. He, we were in leadership Montgomery class together and I thought he was a fine man and you know, the, that ethics charge you know, really hurt him uh, in a lot of ways. Mara say, you know, uh, John Allen Muhammad was executed in Virginia in 2009, yet uh, Malvo continues to appeal his sentences. And even just today, one of his, the youngest victim that, uh, of the shootings has said he deserves a second chance. Uh, has justice been served? You know, uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not somebody to, to be able to measure that. You know, I think if, if a victim 
finds it in their heart, then, you know, that's, that's, that's commendable. Um, I think there's a reason why we have the laws that we do. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm no, I, I'm, I'm not God. I'm not, you know, I can't judge somebody, you know, um, for the decisions that they've made. And so I think I'm unqualified to, to answer this question. <laughs> okay. I, that's fair. I, I know that, you know, it's, it, you know, we all have our own feelings of justice, you know, and as we go to our break, uh, for parting shots, I'll, I'll point out that there are actually two memorials that have been established for uh, the victims of the sniper shootings. The one in uh, Brookside Garden in Wheaton, Brookside Garden. Mm -hmm. and the other one is there is a, a plaque in uh, the middle of the, of the square of the executive building in, in Rockville. The one in Brookside Gardens is particularly lovely and, and peaceful. Stay tuned when we come back from this short break. 